This is Off the Press again, where we review major headlines from the national dailies. And with me in the studio this morning is a social commentator, our very own Ekene Ezeji. Welcome, Ekene. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good yeah, to have you pleasure. this morning. Same here. Uh, so there are so many papers we have with us, The Punch, Vanguard, The State, The Nation. But we're going to begin with The Punch newspaper and the major headlines here says xenophobia fg to evacuate 319 from south africa on tuesday ramaposa sends three envoys to buhari and others that's on page two and top of uh, the newspaper there yet to be displayed would be displayed on your screen is uh, 9.6 billion dollars judgment probe extensive intensive borderless says malami you find that again on page eight of the punch newspaper showare six bill in fresh court application on page 44 now displayed on your screen uh, of the punch newspaper which is up for review this morning and fish out for a killer cops uh, fire me tells cp that's on page 44 also nlng 610 10 billion dollar loan for train. You find that on page 36. And drunk policeman uh, stabs nine persons at Undo nightclub. That's very sad. Mm. You find that on page four. And then we have a uh, picture stories here. Africa united against xenophobia. South Africans protesting against xenophobic attacks in Johannesburg on Saturday. So this is quite recent. So Ekene, where do we begin this morning? Let's start with xenophobia so we can put it to, put it to, put rest, it to rest for today. I but I'm sure it will you. show up again I tomorrow. agree with you. <laughs> <Or later laughs> it needs day. to go to rest. Um, you know, the shame of this is that, and, and this is, let me even start with my impression. My impression is that the government of South Africa are getting bad advice mm -hmm. because a lot of diplomatic relations is to do with posturing, you know. So even when people are saying, giving uh, government advice, saying sue them, mm -hmm. to some extent you want them to show some contrition, some yeah, responsibility remorse. for what they've done to mm -hmm. our citizens. And that means that there's room for us to have a conversation. But the fact that a lot of people get the impression, and it's been coming up again and again, that the South African government were somehow endorsing this these attacks, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not without, you know, um, evidence in a sense. They've said that, you know, at least they've mentioned the Minister of Internal Affairs of yes, all people so making a statement mm -hmm. that, you know, essentially these uh, Nigerians are drug peddlers and so on. And then another uh, police officer in a senior position saying, we won't let these immigrants come and take our jobs. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, people, and lots of tweets. And then people even saying, you know, people, high ranking people, and I think even Ramaphosa mm -hmm. denying that there's xenophobic attacks. Yeah, and then when you have the incident that happened when, you know, Airpeace was gracious enough to offer a flight to take away the very people you're trying to drive away by force. You then Hinder arrest the them moment. at the airport and essentially frustrate because that, the airline still had to fly with the fuel and everything, but it went half full. And you're, you know, are you trying to embarrass us? Are you trying to humiliate us? The only thing I can imagine that you think you're scoring points by telling the world that, well, we're proving that these people didn't come in legally. So mm. this is our way of exposing them, you know, and making a, but it's but was bad that necessary advice. at that time? That's what I'm saying, it's bad advice mm. because you may think you're scoring a point now, but, you know, usually when people play a game of chess, you look further down the line and say, if I make this move, how will it affect Effects. me? And it looks like they're not very long-sighted. So a lot of people get the impression that Ramaphosa only turned around to send these envoys mm -hmm. because he went for Mugabe's burial and he was booed there. And he seemed to then ad lib and begin to offer an apology on the spot, which wasn't initially, it seemed, mm. written into his script. Um, so it's like almost like he a rude awakening up. for him, and which you would really think that by now he'd be surrounded by people who are more savvy and who understood what was at stake. Because really, a lot of people have done the maths, and they say if we leave, forget the people who were planning to go and have now said we're not going near South Africa. Mm. If we drive away the people who are already there, some degree of financial um, income will be lost, mm. and you know, and you can begin to do the crunch your figures, and you realize that you'll be the loser. Bottom line, so you gain nothing by isolating yourself. Mm. And these people you look down on. They're not a liability, really, if you look at it. They're, they were actually an asset, but you didn't know it. And mm. this is where we are. But, you know, there's room for negotiation. They're sending the envoy. And perhaps we'll be the more mature of the two, mm -hmm. that is us Nigerians, and allow them to do the right thing and set us back on course for a more profitable relationship. Mm, great. Uh, you can see even in the picture story, there are more uh, pictures of some people here. Say, Xenophobia is a cousin of tribalism mm. and human rights apply to all living in South Africa. Mm, there's even one of a lady saying stop killing our husbands because clearly mm. South African ladies are marrying Nigerians. Nigerians. You know, we're, That's true, we, though. we have more mm. um, at stake than they seem to have realized. Yeah, because one of the you know one of the returnees said he left his wife there. Uh, 
uh, he's Nigerian. his children. And his children, and because he didn't feel safe, so he had to return. It's unfortunate because what happens is it ends up affecting both sides, both South Africans and uh, Nigerians. Nigerians yes. Anyway, there's uh, this um, Shawore again, mm -hmm. uh, six bail in fresh court application. Yes, I mean, again, a lot of people are watching this thing with interest, and every day that they keep him there, it looks like, you know, again, injustice. There's a sense in which there's an injustice being done to him. Mm -hmm. Part of what his own, um, you say his petition put forward, I'm using the word petition because I'm looking for the right word, uh, what he tabled under his bail application said, look, this, this is a man who hasn't been accused of any, any wrongdoing in mm. the past, so why are you treating him in such a harsh way? And, and really, most people in their right senses will say, look, you've kept him for 45 days now. You haven't really brought up anything substantial in your, yeah, in your case against him. This is the time, and it's not likely Shore will disappear. Mm -hmm. He's not the kind of person who will just vanish. Mm -hmm. Let him out so that we understand that you are a bit proportionate, even in your, your, your desire to preserve yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the longer they leave him under these conditions, the more, the more even people who went for him will begin to say, no, no, you're that being unfair to on. this man, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it, it will be, the danger there is that they will be playing into the record of, you know, some conversations already saying, oh, that's how they will leave him there, and <laughs> we'll finally. I, I doubt, I, I sincerely. Spend doubt that will happen to him, but I, also, I think their plan, again, maybe they're behaving a bit like South Africa now, not looking ahead. I think their plan might be to wait for a while, long enough to maybe let um, t talk about him die down a little bit and then they'll just sort of sneak him out. Mm. Uh, but what they should realise is that a man like Shuri is never going to come out even silently. They, exactly. Uh, he, if they he has the out. means to <laughs> amplify his voice yes. and there's no way even if you brought him out at night, people will not find mm -hmm. out. So the sooner you get him out, the better and just you will you know, more likely tell the story even if you sneak him out. Yes. So do you yes. want so to do I, I don't think you can question. avoid that notoriety. Just mm -hmm. let the man out, you mm -hmm. know, and let him have his bail. All right. Uh, so uh, the next uh, paper here, because basically it's xenophobia that's all there. It uh, would be Vanguard up for a review and again, first front page xenophobia. Ramaphosa sends envoys to Nigeria six and six other countries and then aftermath of GS, as you said mm -hmm. and booze at Mugabe's burial. Ramaphosa in church blasts perpetrators of attacks. We're hearing that for the first time. <laughs> and uh, so South Africa's government, government now, Bolaji Akinyemi is urging the uh, federal government to do that. You find this uh, uh, stories on page five of the Vanguard newspaper as displayed there on your screen. And ECOWAS summits, we have a picture story there of uh, President Muhammad Buhari with uh, Sierra Leone president and other uh, African leaders who are attending the summit. And Ati Kuvas Buhari, PDP governor's back party's decision to approach the Supreme Court. Uh, this is following the ruling, I believe. Uh, you find that on page 49. Mixed reactions trail Akin Toye's acceptance as Yoruba leader. Find that on page 11 also. And on the top of uh, the Vanguard newspaper, it says, Why Jonathan refused to sack three northern governors over Boko Haram? Adoke is saying, And the Catholic bishops flay Buhari over ministerial appointment. I wonder why they're speaking only now. Mm. Well, you find that on page 11. And tier one banks record 2.2 trillion outperform the GDP. You also find that story on. Uh, the newspaper, the Vanguard newspaper, as displayed. And if we run quickly, oh, behind is the sports. usual spot. So <laughs> we might as well just uh, come back to the front page and see. Nigeria failed, my husband says, wife of murdered Ondo uh, prof. You find that on page seven. What is it about? Oh, gosh, I tried to glean a little mm. bit. Um, I, I didn't manage to get to the gist of it. So maybe okay. I should just leave that for now and talk about the Catholic bishops. OK. Um, because funny enough, even though you were saying you wonder why they're talking about it, they said mm -hmm. a number of things. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Vanguard picked on this. Well, okay. One of the things they were saying was that they wanted the government to to focus on justice, that this sense of injustice, a bit like what I'm saying about Shuri again, mm -hmm. if people perceive that you're not being just or balanced in the way you're, you're going after some people and you're not going after some people or you're being selective, selective. in the people you surround yourself with, one of the issues they raised was, the, was that even though they had somehow ticked the box of in their appointments, just getting the right number of you know, diversity, mm -hmm. just the minimal, they said it didn't quite reflect Represent. the spirit behind you know, so they should have gone over and above. It's, you know, if some people have said, you know, create even the number of women, of course, who it seems to be going backwards rather mm. than forwards. So, you know, you, you should be seen so. as progressive in every way mm. and not, you know, almost like you're trying to be conservative and just have the old 
cronies people, around you. It doesn't, it doesn't inspire people to see you. It as doesn't even inspire is, change, I can It doesn't. And, and we're at a time when people are looking for that body language, they're looking for that sign that you're going to break the mold, not mm. somehow keep us more hemmed in, you know, because things are not going the way we want them to go. Mm. Um, just again, diversifying it because uh, the 9.6 billion, I know we mentioned that in the punch, even mm. though Vanguard hasn't brought it up. And Malami was reassuring us that, you know, again, to do with this justice issue, that nobody will be left, no sacred cows. But you don't really get that because he's meant to be the chief justice of the federation mm -hmm. and yet he seems to be talking as though he's holding brief for the incumbent mm. administration, administration. He, he somehow is making a case against the previous administration and he's at pains to tell us that you know those people should have done this they should have done that and that the reason why even though this government have started negotiating on the figures they're not doing it because they're trying to admit culpability. He's almost like he's representing mm. the incumbent. You know, he should, nobody, if he really means that there will be no sacred cows, he shouldn't seem to be speaking on behalf of mm. one administration. Just go after the corporates and just, bring them to you know, us, just whoever they are. Just be objective and, and put everything out in the open. So I think mm. we haven't quite realized that people are watching. And even a child in the streets knows when you're being fair. And, and you know, you can speak, I'm fair, I'm fair. But if but your actions don't show that you're mm. fair, you're just speaking to yourself. Mm. If there's a sharp contrast, people would know. Of also. course, mm. we, we know when you're just, um, just speaking words. All right. And uh, it says, um, uh, PDP governors uh, back party's decision to approach the Supreme Court. I guess that's after the ruling. You know, I, I, um, I heard, um, I heard um, uh, San yeah, last night, uh, Clark, and he, you know, respected San. And he, mm. he, I was careful to sort of look at what he was saying. He seemed to be saying that, look, they, they shouldn't bother going, going to, to the, the Supreme court. court because uh, as far as they're going to present the same evidence they presented to the tribunals, they will fail. Mm. Now, he, he was basically saying that a lot of the lawyers, and he said he's happy to be to be challenged on this. A lot of the lawyers who are advising the PDP will not tell them that they will this fail because outside. they're happy to earn their own money out of what they see as free money, mm -hmm. government money. It's business. Um, however, you know, I wasn't sure he was saying entirely because I was trying to read between the lines because he said, look, you know, they shouldn't have bothered even on the tribunals because on no, no tribunal would have found for them because mm. they didn't um, they didn't actually satisfy the burden of proof. But he then went on to say that the worst um, elections we've had, which he said was in uh, 2010, mm. uh, no, tw 2007, yeah, Dua's tenor, despite how bad that was, they were unable to discharge the burden of proof. And he said that that burden of proof, proof is very difficult mm. to, to discharge. So I wasn't sure he wasn't saying that there wasn't a case mm. to say that the uh, elections were badly, were not transparent, and were not, but that they, didn't, they couldn't make the case. That, that seemed to be what he was saying. Not that there wasn't a case, but that they, it would be very hard, mm. or if not impossible, so. to make a case against the presidential mm. you know, candidate. Mm. And that, that was a little sad for me, actually. I can imagine so. Yeah. I mean, but I, even that's been said, I'm sure they, they, are not, they won't relent. Because again, they want to, what do you say? He satisfy. says it's all politicking. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It could be. Anyways, we'll see where that leads them to. Mm. Uh, we have with me here now, this day, newspaper up for review. And on the front page, it says, Again, the 9.6 billion. We will spare nobody mm, in uh, 9.6 billion. P and ID field deal says uh, Bakar Malami confirms security agencies quiz prominent uh, personalities, denies probe of NJC lawmakers by N NFIU. Uh, so we have a picture story also here of our president uh, seem to be congratulated or the Ogun State Gov uh, Governor Dapo Abiodun seem to be con uh, congratulating him after the ruling. And um, oil prices surged 20% on drone strike on Saudi Arabia. Brent rises to six months high of $71. Uh, that's on the front page, the right top. You'll find the story continued also on page eight as displayed there on your screen. And uh, we also have revealed how military super camp strategy aids Boko Haram to hold positions. Uh, this you can find on the front page and then continued again on page eight. And PDP governors back articles bid to appeal to the Supreme Court. Mm, Basically, more politicking. The same thing. I, yeah, um, I feel a little sad at the fact that a drone strike in Saudi Arabia could plummet oil prices and affect us and put us in such a vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of people will say where, where we are because we haven't planned for the future. And even now, we're still not planning. Still have an oil producing all. country and we haven't developed our refineries. And you know, even shocks like this, because they said apparently this plummet it hasn't, it hasn't been as bad as this for a while. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how far back they had to go to see, to see how, you know, when we've had a drop 
Very similar nice. to this. You know, it's dropped by 11 point something, mm. which has basically sent it down to 70 something. And, you know, this is something that really most people are feeling the shock around the world. But you know that countries like America, who are not even oil producing like we mm -hmm. are, have tried to do things to, to somehow, you know, buffer, give them a little cushioning against this kind of an event. What mm. are we doing? Ourselves. We should keep asking the question. That should have a direct effect, to, to, so yeah, to, to, to protect us, because mm. since we're still largely dependent on oil, mm. how are we protecting our, do you say, the golden goose, so to speak? Mm. What are we doing to make investments, long-term investments? Mm, valid question. But you know, sometimes it looks as very far, you know, uh, but then, like you said, the, the effect trickles yeah, down. Yeah, and in a twinkle of an eye. we'll find ourselves to be there. Mm. And then, report says Nigeria loses six Hundred million annually to illegal fishing. That was a fascinating one. I had mm. to go and read that actually because I was like, oh, this is interesting. And you know, again, <laughs> you don't want to keep seeming like you're, you're mourning or singing the same sad song. Or negative. But it's amazing to find out that we are spending as much as 800 mm. billion. Is it billion? I no, think 600 it's, million. Okay, we're spending as much as 800 million. We mm. are spending as much as 800 million on importing fish. Mm. Whereas because we don't have the right technology, people like China, that's at least the country they listed may well be illegally taking up to the amount, to the value of 600 million no, worth of joking. fish from our, so, so we have, it's almost like we have it under our nose. So you, it would even be ironic if we're going and importing from so, the same China that are taking from us, because goodness. we don't have the means to control and to, you know, to somehow preserve our own, you know, so mm. it's almost like, um, I don't know if you want to call it a, a tale of, uh, 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 I'm looking for the right word, where you, you're laughing at yourself, but mm. it's actually quite sad, yeah. you know, that you're in this position where your raw materials, you can't do anything to harness them. You're, you're, you're in the water and the, the soap is... Entry, okay, that's another way of it. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, can you imagine? Entry so we're, we're spending and... more importing fish um, and then we're losing almost to the same tune our own fish mm. and then we're importing the same. This is quite <laughs> Crazy. unfortunate. But you know, really? the irony of it is that the demand is there. The reason why we're importing that amount of fish is that there is a, a demand for demand. it. And most countries would love it that they have such a demand. This mm. is why, you know, um, someone like the, the man from Facebook, when he came and he saw the demand for, you know, internet usage, he mm. was excited. Zuckerberg. We have the market mm. for it. So with Mark Zuckerberg. So you, we, most countries would be excited to meet that demand this, because this is what makes business mm. flourish. But yeah. we are unable to meet the demands. And we're talking about importing fish, talking about importing rice, things that are on our nose and even oil. Important toothpick. Refined well. oil. Mm. This <laughs> so is we, sad, shouldn't really. be, we shouldn't be be saying these things. It's yeah. quite unfortunate because it means that if we have the right technology, we should be gaining. And we should be exporting. And exporting. So rather than people stealing from us, they will buy from us. Mm -hmm. mm. It's unfortunate. I hope we're paying attention. And then at the back page, on the back page of this day is uh, columnist Chimaroke Namani, developmental trajectory of the Igbo people. Please grab a copy of uh, this day uh, newspaper and find out what this is about. Oh, it says Aladimma. Uh, developmental trajectory of Igbo people. Aladima translates to... The land is good. The land is good. Mm. So find out what this is about. On I don't know. Sometimes I, I want to I see these things as signs because you find, you know, the recent replacement of the the new Afenifere leader. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, initially they said he wasn't the one and now he's the one. Mm. You know, it's almost like the, the, the tribal groups are just consolidating their... <laughs> everybody's looking to their own. And, and that tells you a lot. That tells you that people are not confident that the centre is where the Holding security together. is at. So mm. they're now everybody's looking for ways to develop their own. Mm. You know, you, you would say that maybe this is the time for people to really look at things like proper restructuring so that it, rather than people separating surreptitiously, yeah. we now do a structured thing that we can you know, make sure that we can still stay together and still benefit as individual mm. um, groups. All right, uh, and that's it for this day as we move to the Nation newspaper. It says, why tribunal didn't, didn't rule on articles citizenship? Please find out on page 29, such task not for panel. Uh, you find it on page 29 of the Nation newspaper, now displayed on your screen. And no NFIU order on lawmakers' uh, judges' accounts. No such directives. Please find out also on page 10. Or you to get 20 years growth plan. Makinde raises the bar. That's on page 41. So that's good there. And the big story for the Nation newspaper is the Catholic Bishop Conference. Uh, they urge for justice and peace to reign. Can I talk mm, about that? On yes. page 37. And South Africa's envoy heads for Nigeria. 
On peace mission, uh, 320 Nigerians will be back tomorrow. They were supposed to be back yesterday. Mm. Um, there's there's another, week. there's a second. There's a second batch. Yes, the first batch the are batch. here. And okay. I saw some interviews with them. Some of them very happy to be back, mm. singing, you, you know. You, the national, you had, and they <laughs> were so emotional. Yes, but one, the thing that actually touched me was, one of them was actually saying that they really felt valued, that they, mm. this kind of thing that Nigeria did for them, is, it makes them feel like, you know, the way Americans value their citizens. So these things matter. Okay, now is it Nigeria that did? It's or Epis. Were Epis? <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The point is, mm. Epis made, thank God, mm -hmm. Epis were able to step in where the and governments were not able to step in. Because mm. I, I think people have stated that Epis are not receiving any support from the mm. government. But they yes. should. Uh, yeah, because this is a very clear statement and it, it resonates with people. They don't forget that when they were at their lowest, you stepped in and yes. made, gave them some dignity. Mm -hmm. And that dignity also it reverberates. The people who are sending you out see that you have people behind you. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's the same if you're yeah, a woman yeah. marrying to a man's home and you have your family are constantly showing face and saying, mm. how are you doing? Mm. The husband is unlikely to treat there. you anyhow. Yeah, because he so, knows there are people. Yeah, the people you have oh. backing. So now they know that there's a country that will send a free, uh, two, two free aircrafts to come yeah. and get their people mm. and will hopefully sue them for damages. These are things that send out the right message that, look, if you mess with the Nigerian, you're messing with Nigeria, mm, and we yeah. still have our dignity. Mm. Um, the the uh, governor who is raising the bar, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good Market. news. I like the fact that you said he's, it's good news. Mm. I did read it, but sometimes I feel we can't, we, 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 bat, we play politics too much. Okay. Yes, he has a 20-year plan, and he has confessed or admitted that you know, prior to now, you know, in his state, there's been a lot of underperformance, but he still finds himself saying, oh, they did the best they can, but mm. we have to do, how can you have done the best you can yeah. if you were underperforming? You know, the two don't Being quite add up. Correct. So declare which side you're on. And, mm. and if you want to be, you know, you want to make a criticism, make it clear so people know that this is wrong and this is right. You and can't, this is you can't your have position, both. Clearly. Exactly. You have mm. to make enemies at some point. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's true. You have to make enemies mm. at some point. Yeah. As but far speak as the truth. Mm. Yeah. And then, uh, no sacred cows, and again, mm. the 9.6 billion judgment probe. We hope to see the end of that. Yes. And PDP Governor OK's appeal, uh, uh, you find that too on page 12. You continued on page 12. Oh, sorry, I, I, sorry to interrupt. No, the the bit about the lawmakers was a bit funny, actually, mm -hmm. uh, because it seemed that information had been leaked that um, the lawmakers, um, uh, do you say their bank account details were being sought? And then apparently, when the details were leaked, the, the body said, no, 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 mm. we didn't seek it. Um, but then, you know, somebody within the bank said, actually, I think they did, but what they've done is they've retracted because they realize it's not going to be a popular policy to pursue. Then they then said, no, actually, we're entitled to, to seek, to get that information. We don't need to ask for it formally. Mm. So, you know, we didn't seek it. If we sought it, we'll just, we'll just go and get it. So I, I'm not quite sure what's going what on there, but about? it's like a comedy of errors. What, mm -hmm. what exactly are we looking at? <laughs> so but either way, if you were within, among the lawmakers, you'd be slightly jittery now mm -hmm. and you'd be securing your on? base. Yeah. <laughs> so please find out exactly what it yeah. is mm. about on page 10 of uh, the Nation newspaper. And uh, behind the, the back page, it says, In Touch, the Cow and Cowry. Yes, another uh, column there uh, with picture of Oshiba, Vice President, and uh, Lalong. Please find out what this is about. The Old Man at Sea is another one uh, on the back page of the Nation newspaper as displayed there. And then we head to the final one, complete sports. Can mm. anything on sports this morning? I wish. Uh, no tennis. I, I just, no, I, <laughs> no tennis. Okay. <laughs> no tennis. I know people were discussing something about, um, is it Man United or Arsenal? I don't know. Mm. So let me not even let them no. down by trying to analyze it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll leave that for our sports mm. uh, desk. Yes, I heard, I heard people analyzing. Yeah. Okay. So, but just quickly, very quickly from the complete uh, sports, we, we see Iga, Iga Lo misses penalty on CSL return and then Beckham pushing forward with plans to sign Messi Liverpool open main contract talks and same old gunners uh, Nima slams PSG for blocking his exit Ericsson to run down Tottenham contract uh, Onye Onyekuru benched for 90 minutes Please, there seem to be plenty of stories anyway here. Please grab a copy and see what this is about. Also at the back page, on the back page, it's Beckham pushing forward with plans to sign Messi, the same thing, and Neymar slams. I think this is more an, a more elaborate story of what we saw on the front page of the complete sports. And uh, Ekene, thank you for is being with me. <laughs>
<laughs> this morning. Mm -hmm. And it's at this point that we will round it up uh, here on uh, Off the Press. This is the program where we analyze the headlines and make sense of it. And thank you very much, Ekene, as I said, for being with me this morning. We will do this again tomorrow, the same time, 8.30 a.m. Off the Press here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okui.